No plan survives first contact with reality. This military wisdom applies perfectly to project management. Did you know that according to PMI, 86% of projects face a significant crisis? The difference between projects that recover and those that implode comes down to one skill, anticipating what could go wrong before it does. I'm Chris from Your Project Pro, and today I'm showing you how the most successful project managers prepare for storms while the sky is still clear. Welcome back. For our newcomers, we're all about making project management click. Last week, we mastered the critical path method, and today we're diving into risk management. This is the art of expecting the unexpected. What is risk management? Well, it's not all doom and gloom. It is about foresight and preparation, though. Think of it as your project's insurance policy. At its core, risk management means identifying potential problems, analyzing their impact, and preparing your response before these challenges arise. What makes this so powerful, though? Well, when a crisis hits, most people freeze or panic. But with proper risk management, you will already have a playbook ready. While others scramble, you'll execute your pre-planned response. Take NASA's approach to the Apollo 13 mission. When that famous oxygen tank exploded, the team didn't improvise from scratch. They switched to backup procedures that they had already practiced. That preparation literally saved lives. Now, let's break down risk management into actionable steps. Step one is to identify your risks. And you start by asking simply, what could possibly go wrong? You involve your entire team in this brainstorming process because their different perspectives will catch different risks. And from a software implementation project, for example, risks might include key team members leaving or holidays and vacation time. It might include vendor delays, technical integration problems, and even stakeholder requirement changes. Step two is a risk analysis. Next, we're gonna evaluate each risk based on their probability, how likely it is to happen, and the impact, how badly this would affect the project. A simple rating system works fine here, using high, medium, and low for both factors. You wanna focus your energy on those high probability, high impact risks first. And then step three is we create a risk response plan. For each significant risk, we develop a specific response strategy. And we have a few different strategies we can choose from. The first being mitigate, where we reduce the probability or impact. Our next one is to avoid. We can choose to avoid and to eliminate the risk entirely. For example, let's say uh, we have a problem with a vendor. Well, we could choose to choose a different vendor, thus avoiding that risk altogether. The third one is transfer the risk. And this is acceptable. You can shift the risk to another party, such as insurance or warranties or contractual agreements. And the last one is to accept it. Simply acknowledging the risk exists and being ready to deal with it. And this usually works best for low impact or unavoidable risks. Risk monitoring is our last step in this risk management process. And Risks evolve as your project progresses. You want to schedule regular risk review meetings to reassess your risk register and to identify any new threats. So here are some practical tools to jumpstart your risk management. Risk register. This one is fantastic and it's really a must for any project. This is just a document that tracks all identified risks, their ratings being low, medium or high, and your response plans. Even a basic spreadsheet works just fine for this. The probability impact matrix that we talked about before. This is just a visual grid to help prioritize which tasks need attention first. And then there's a SWOT analysis, SWOT. And this helps to identify internal strengths and weaknesses alongside external threats and opportunities. Again, much like everything else we've talked about so far, you don't need fancy software to manage these things. You can do this in a spreadsheet or even on a whiteboard during team meetings. But here's a pro tip for you. 
to create a top five risk list that you review at the start of every project meeting, or at least kind of regularly throughout the project. This helps keep those critical risks front of mind for everyone and ensures that they don't get forgotten amid your day-to-day -day work. And there you have it. This is the power of proactive risk management. And when you master this skill, you'll transform from constantly putting out fires to confidently navigating challenges. And next week, we're gonna dive a bit deeper into some risk management tools. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe and share it to those who you think will benefit from it. Make sure you check out the description for a link to my website with a bunch of other tools and resources available for you. And in the comments, maybe drop in there like, what's your biggest unexpected risk that you've faced in a project? I'd love to hear from you. I'd also love to hear how you handled that. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.